Good morning, everybody. My name is Jeff McKay. I'm president and CEO of Organogenesis, a cell-based company based in uh, Canton, Massachusetts, just south of Boston, and uh, chair of ARM. So I'd like to welcome you all to the eighth annual Stem Cells on the Mesa conference. It's the third featuring the investor and partnering forum. Uh, as you have noticed, we've outgrown the Sanford site. We have 400 people in attendance, which is a 25% increase from a year ago. So, so uh, very, very nice growth. Um, but before we begin, I, I'd really like to uh, highlight um, that a, a sad event, the passing of Dwayne Roth, happened through a tragic uh, bicycle accident last summer. And many of us in the room know Dwayne. Uh, as a board member of CIRM and the, the vice chair of Connect. And uh, I'd just like to uh, invite us to have a brief moment of silence in, in his honor. Thank you. So uh, a lot is going on in our field, and uh, w one, of the, uh, one of the oddities right now is our partners in government have shut down. And so that has touched us in many ways. It's touched this meeting. Uh, Celia Witten, who's the, uh, the uh, head of cell and gene therapy within CBER, cannot join us. And, and a few others were not able to join us. So uh, we, do, we do hope that our partners in government uh, get back in the saddle shortly as, as they're an essential part of the development mix with us. Um, th this meeting is really about partnerships. It's about the collaborations and uh, some of the networking, the bumping and mingling that happens in addition to the sitting in the sessions is as important as the sessions themselves, is that our, our, our field really is dependent on partnerships. And the, the partnerships obviously bring capital, but also the skills to advance the development, the commercialization, and the manufacturing infrastructure that are necessary. But, but unconventional partnerships are required as well. In our field, working with all sorts of different people across the value chain, including patient associations, outcome specialists, and, and all, all of these uh, constituents are represented at this meeting. So uh, hopefully, in between sessions, you can network as, as much as possible. One of the questions that comes up often is, uh, wh where is pharma in, in our field? And uh, I'll just give you a little bit of a teaser, is, is the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine has been conducting a very thorough assessment of where is pharma in terms of their investment and activity in regenerative medicine. And not just conventional market research, but actually having some really well-placed senior scientists in, in companies within the Alliance contact senior level people within pharma to really have an informed discussion as to where they sit. So you, you will get the full results shortly from the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine. But, but a, a few things are, are really relevant is, first of all, using our big tent broad definition of regenerative medicine, essentially 100% of pharma companies say that they are, quote unquote, highly active in regenerative medicine. And I, I think that that's not always clearly understood. We, we sort of have this perception that there's a watch and wait mentality. But I think in one way, shape, or form, from their vantage point, from their eyes, they're highly vested in regenerative medicine today. And when asked, what, what are the therapeutic areas that really have the best opportunity for reasonable term clinical advances, the list is vast. And the list uh, al almost covers us from head to toe. Cardiovascular, peripheral vascular disease, stroke, wound healing, neurodegenerative disease, spinal cord, muscular, skeletal, autoimmune, diabetes, metabolic, ocular, and other. So, so there's a vast array of opportunities. When they were asked, what are the issues that need to be addressed in order to accelerate the advancement of the field, it's the very topics that are going to be addressed at this meeting. And it's the topics that are, are, are near and dear to your heart. A, re a need for better cell characterization, for better assays, for better potency issues. A need for standards, regulatory clarity across the major markets. and. Uh, Business model questions need to be addressed. Pricing needs to be addressed. Reimbursement needs to be addressed. But first and foremost, loud and clear data, and, and not just any data, rigorous professional data that would meet regulatory standards needs to be generated. And, and so it, it's an exciting situation because I think one of the key things that you're going to hear from the 45 companies 
is where they are in generating that data. So that, that's, that's coming up today, tomorrow. Um, now, the, the final thing I'd say is just in a very informal sense, reviewing the news flow, Rob, Rob Margolin from the Alliance of Regenerative Medicine did you know, sort of a, a brief analysis of what's been going on in our field. And I guess in, in a very informal way, and we're probably missing some, the deal flow, the amount of investment of capital invested in regenerative medicine has increased substantially this year to about $1.6 billion in financing, which if you look at one year ago is an increase of $600 million. So there is more capital, there is more investment, and there's more energy, there's more excitement. The other, the other metric to look at is, is IPO. And this might not be as much a function of the regenerative medicine field as, as the IPO window being open, but IPOs are happening. And just to name a few, say, uh, FATE, CDI, uh, Bluebird, Reprocell, Cardio3. So some real dynamics in the financial world are changing and that they tend to be favorable to our field. Um, and then the, the, the uh, I guess the last thing that I'd invite you to do is to sit back and to enjoy, to speak up whenever possible and play an active role in the meeting. So thank you very much.